um, for you to take a look at. So anyway, uh, take it away. Thank you, Chris. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to my session, Free Stuff 2021 edition. Uh, my name is John Kiefler. Um, I'm an instructor of computer information systems at Pittsburgh State University. I'm also the director of development and a partner at Limelight Marketing, which is a, a mid-sized marketing agency that operates out of Pittsburgh, Kansas. So I have higher ed background. I also have corporate experience and I like to marry those two together to come up with the best solutions and outcomes. And that's where a lot of these tools we're gonna look at come today, come from. Um, I'm also a plural site author. So I author educational content related to technology. Um, so it's great to be with you all today. And um, you know, I will say uh, we're gonna go over four free tools today that you can use um, pretty much out of the box that have great applications in higher ed. We'll talk about them. We'll take a quick look at all of them. Um, it'll probably be a pretty quick presentation because just like with these four tools, you know, this presentation is all about bang for the buck as well. So let's talk about free stuff for a minute. Um, I think in general, we like free stuff, but there are some caveats. So let's talk about this. So just to frame it up, why did I want to talk about this this year? Well, 2020 and, and really 2021 have been tough for a lot of reasons, right? We've had the pandemic, obviously, but there's been other factors that are straining us in higher ed as well. Things straining our budgets, um, enrollment declining, things like that. And I would venture to say we're all probably excited to find ways to stretch our dollars right now. And I know we have some federal relief that's come in and will probably continue to come in for a while, but that won't be forever. And so you know, we have the pandemic, we have these fiscal crunches, so it's tough. And when the going gets tough, sometimes free stuff becomes more appealing. Now, with all that being said, I think sometimes free stuff gets a bad rap for a couple reasons. Well, maybe I'm not gonna get the support I need, or maybe it's gonna be an inferior product, or perhaps if it's open source, which actually nothing we're looking at today is open source, interestingly enough, but if it's open source, you know, maybe there are vulnerabilities or, or maybe it's not going to be as easy to work with various different things like that. Maybe it's not to the enterprise grade quality that we feel like we need as an institution with hundreds of employees and thousands and thousands of students. So sometimes free stuff can get a bad rap, but I'm here to tell you today there are a lot of great free tools. And especially right now, the free or freemium model has gained a lot of steam because there is so much competition. So this is a wonderful time for us as a consumer of cloud-based products because there are a lot of options and there's a lot of good deals. Now, like I said, it's not always fair that the free stuff gets a bad rap. So that's one of the reasons we're here today. And of course, why pay for it when we can get it for free, right? I think we should always look at this and try to see, is there a free alternative to something that maybe we're going to pay for? Maybe we find a good paid product. Let's look for free alternatives as well. The other thing that I would challenge us to think about is do you really need every single feature in your enterprise grade paid product? Have you ever purchased a, a, you know, a SaaS product, a cloud product or some enterprise grade product and used about 30% of it? If you have, and if that sounds familiar, that's because that's what almost everyone does. People purchase way more than they actually need. And a lot of the time that just ends up being waste. So, we're sold a lot of the times on these broad, great feature sets, when in reality, we need like two things out of this platform. And so that's something else to think about too. Do you really need every feature um, that is going to necessitate paying for something that's incredibly expensive? So I'd really challenge you to think about that. So what are the four free things we're gonna look at today? Well, first we're going to look at a help desk and knowledge base uh, platform called Freshdesk. I've been using Freshdesk for many years. Its free tier is probably the most generous free tier of any product or one of the most generous free tiers of any product that I've encountered. And that really actually goes for all of these. They're all incredibly generous with really very little caveat. So we're going to look at Freshdesk. We're going to look at a support chat platform. So our students love to talk to us via chat. They don't want to call, they don't want to email, they want instant feedback, they want to chat with us. So we're gonna look at a support chat platform called Talk2. We're also gonna look at a downtime alert platform. You know, as everything goes, as everything has become virtual and continues to move that direction or will be that way for here on out really, 
it's important that we're alerted if there is downtime. We want to be in the know before we find out about it from social media or from our constituents or from our university president. Hey, something is down, right? So uh, fresh ping is free downtime alert software that can help us with that. And then finally, a CRM. So um, this is a little bit different than these other products. It's a little bit less IT focused, but I think it's absolutely critical that we are focusing on marketing and recruiting students. And there's a free CRM out there that can help us with this as well. So several different products in different veins. These all have in common the fact that they're incredibly generous in their free tier. They all have applications in higher ed and really in most IT. They're all incredibly robust, very little configuration to use. And most of these have enterprise grade features out of the box that you wouldn't expect from a free platform. So let's dive in and take a look at Freshdesk first. So Freshdesk, I'm gonna throw out an opinion here and this may be controversial um, or it may resonate, I'm not sure, you, you all tell me, but I think we tend to massively overthink help desk and ticketing software. And we buy these crazy products from these incredibly expensive vendors and we use a teeny fraction of the functionality when all we really need to be able to do is service support requests. So this is my opinion, I will say that. Um, if you may disagree with me and we can have that discussion after the presentation, but I think we tend to massively overthink help desk and ticketing software. So when someone wants help with an issue, they wanna send an email, they wanna send, a, they wanna create some kind of support request and they want a resolution. All the person on the other end cares about is a resolution. Right, so we have to think about that piece of it. On our end, when we feel the help request, we want things to be organized. We want things to be routed to the right people. We want there to be visibility and analytics into processes, and we want it to be easy to manage. So these are a couple of the primary concerns that we typically have with help desk software, and Freshdesk fulfills all these and then some. But I encourage you to once again kind of think, do we need every single possible help desk feature? Are we actually going to use that? So um, another thing that often comes up related to help desk is knowledge base. Um, I think that pretty much every university website, every university IT website um, in the state, you can go there and then get access to their knowledge base. So that is a critical function of most help desk software. Help, help the users to self-diagnose before they get a hold of you. And Freshdesk handles this as well. So let's take a look at Freshdesk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip over to my other browser tab here. I have several and let's see what Freshdesk can do for us. I'll show you the product at a high level and then we'll do a quick demo. So in terms of pricing and what we get for free, Freshdesk has a variety of pricing tiers. It is a fully cloud-based product by the way. So nothing you really have to do to get up and running. Um, but for free, you get email, and social ticketing. So um, regular ticketing, email ticketing, you get ticket dispatch, which means you can route tickets to appropriate departments or areas based on who it comes from. You get a knowledge base, you get ticket reporting, and you get to choose where your data center is located, which this is really key for higher ed a lot of the time. We want data centers located in the United States. There are enterprise grade products that you can pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for where you don't even get this option. So for free, we get pretty much everything we could want. There is much more available on these higher tiers. A lot of them aren't really needed. Um, maybe you need some automations, maybe you wanna go up to the next tier, but we can do almost everything we need to do for free. So if I flip over, here I'm logged into our Freshdesk environment that we use at Limelight Marketing. And uh, this is actually a monumentous day. It's funny I'm doing this today because for the first time ever, since we started using ticketing software, years ago, we do not have any unresolved tickets in the queue. That happened today. So, it, you know, really exciting day for us. Um, typically we'll maintain anywhere from 10 to 20 tickets. Um, sometimes when it's busier, many, many more. So pretty exciting. But right here off the bat as an administrator, you can see um, kind of a feed of what's been happening. You can see the tickets that are open, unresolved on hold. You can go look at those if there were any, I'll submit one in a minute so we can see. You can see the contacts that have submitted tickets. So these would be your constituents um, at your university or whoever you're servicing. Um, you can set up knowledge base articles and solutions. So I'll look at this in a minute as well. You can also 
set up chatbots. So you can integrate this with um, Freshdesk's chat solution, which is also free. And you can set up chatbots if you want to use a functionality like this to help answer some questions. We have some basic reports and analytics. These are nothing crazy, but I think they tell us the kinds of things we would want to know. Things like ticket volume trends, load analysis, day and hour trends. And then we also have some analytics as well. Um, and so if I load this up here, um, that's, that's that same uh, report here. And you'll get access to more if you do decide to pay. Now, all that functionality is great, but if you go into the settings, you can see how robust this really can become. So you can set up an email channel so people can send email to an email address to create a ticket. You can set up your customer facing ticket portal, which I'll look at in a minute. You can set up a chat widget. You can specify a phone number that people call for support and that can integrate here. You can use social uh, support channels. I don't have any experience with this and don't particularly want to, but it is possible. You can use a feedback form for people to, that you can embed for people to submit requests and you can set up a widget that people can use. And that widget looks like this. It's got like knowledge based stuff baked in and the ability for people to submit uh, a support request. You've got just general settings. You can specify what fields are set up in tickets. Um, you can specify who your agents are in the system, set up groupings. There's a bunch of security settings you can work with here. You can also, um, I'm not gonna get into this too much, but you can set up single sign-on from pretty much any SSO platform you want, Google, ADFS, custom, um, baked SSO, which we use. There's a whole variety of SSO you can use. You can set up automations, tra uh, tweak your email notifications, um, and set up chatbots, like I said. So a whole host of configuration options here, and this is all free. So that's pretty fantastic. Now, what does it look like on the customer side? This is Limelight's custom um, SSO. This is our custom ticket page. So we have this integrated with Freshdesk. Um, if I, as a user who is authorized, log in here um, to submit a ticket, I get the ticketing portal, and that's gonna look like what we'll see here in a second once it goes. There we go, this is the ticketing portal. Now, this particular user I'm logged in with only has the ability to see this one help desk or knowledge base article. So you can imagine if you have a lot of topics you want people to be able to look at like, how do I reset my password? How do I do this? How do I do that? People could see those here if you've got them set up. So if I click on this, here's an example of a knowledge base article. Um, you'll see the phone number that is set up in the system listed here that people can call. Um, you can search for help in the knowledge base. Um, you can submit a new ticket, which is a very simple process. You just put a subject, fill in any fields that are configured for the ticket. You can attach files, you can CC people, all that good stuff. So let me just submit a test ticket here and hit submit. And of course, we'll mark it as urgent because everything is always urgent, right? And based on the, the urgency of a ticket, by the way, you can auto route it, you can do extra notification, you can do all that kinds of stuff. We'll submit this. I've got my ticket. It's being processed by you know, our folks at the help desk. And if I come back into the administrative side, there's that new ticket that was submitted I can correspond with people. I can add internal notes to other agents so that we can only see it. I can add screenshots. I can change the requester. I can do all kinds of things with this ticket. Pretty much any piece of functionality I would need to do, I can do. I can also click on the contact who submitted the ticket and see a history of whatever tickets they've submitted in the past or even create a ticket on behalf of them. So there's a lot of functionality here. If someone submits duplicate tickets, you can merge them. You can forward these tickets on to other people. You have, I think, all the functionality you would need and then some to effectively triage these tickets. You can even add to-dos on the ticket as well. Um, I'll go ahead and just close this ticket because uh, we're not gonna do much else with it. And then that will be reflected on the customer side. They would get an email and so on and so forth. Okay, so lots that can be done with that. And then in terms of managing the knowledge base, um, if we go into the solutions section here in the admin side, you can set up different categories and buckets of, of your knowledge base. And then you can create um, help desk articles within folders inside of it. 
So here's a demo article. I could add more articles, reorder them, add information to them, et cetera. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one since it's just a demo, or I'll do that afterwards, I guess. So um, lots and lots of functionality here. The last thing I wanna to touch on before we move on to the next product is the single sign-on. So this works really well, in my opinion, the way it is set up. So with a lot of the help desk software that I have used in the past, you have to run a user sync constantly to sync your contacts or your people who can submit tickets over to your help desk system. You have to use APIs or a connector or something like that. The way that Freshdesk is set up is when somebody signs in via single sign-on like this, whether that's your university's ADFS or Google sign-on or whatever you use, their account is automatically created. They're automatically ready to go. So the first time a student needs to submit a support request or a staff member needs to submit a support request, their account will be created. You never have to worry about keeping things in sync and you're, you're good to go. And then if you want to, you know, periodically you could maybe purge inactive accounts. So really great, really easy to use. And um, I've been using this software now for over five years. One of the best pieces of software I've used free or otherwise. In terms of ease of use and functionality, our team here has a lot less trouble with this than a lot of the paid products that we use. So um, that's Freshdesk. I could talk about it all day, but let's move on to the next piece of software. Equally as exciting, if not more so. So let's talk about support chat, okay? And let's talk about this parrot here because you might be wondering what that is. So I would, I would argue that support chat is a critical service. This is not an optional, nice to have service anymore. This is a critical service. You lose out on talking to prospective students or current students if you don't have support chat, because this is how a lot of students and faculty even are comfortable talking to you. And there are various areas you might support students through or university users through chat with. It might be admission support, academic support, technical support. It can apply to all areas of the university. So support chat is a critical service, especially in the current environment. And there are a lot of products that have support chat available. Um, Freshdesk, the product we just looked at, has support chat available as a free add-on. I could have been talking about that here, but this product we're looking at on this slide is a little bit better. Um, but one of the things that I've realized working with some of these other chat products, um, oftentimes the paid ones that are very expensive, is they can be very clunky. And a lot of times they don't work all that well and they have issues. Um, so the thing we're gonna look at here today is free and works phenomenally. So a lot of pros there. Um, the other thing is the support chat we're gonna look at today called Talk To, um, has a lot of functionality that lets you do kind of embedded page chat, or chat widgets. So just to show you uh, what that means here, if I go to Pitt State's portal, and I actually helped Pitt State set this up uh, a couple years ago, or well, when the pandemic started, if you go to Pitt State chat, there are all these departments that you can chat with, okay? Guerrilla Geeks, for IT support, admission, registrar, all of these departments have embraced using chat because it is such a critical service and everybody wanted to get in on it once it started and people saw how much students and faculty engage this way. So you can set up kind of embedded embedded pages to where I could click on Gorilla Geeks and um, we have these set up to where you have to sign in. So you can set them up to where people have to sign in. You can set them up to where people can get to them anonymously. You know, if I could type my password, that would also help. I'll get it eventually if I don't get locked out. There we go. So the struggle is real. Anyway, we just set up a simple web page that gates these chats here. Um, the other thing that you could do is if I go to admission.pitstate.edu, this talk to platform allows you to embed chat directly on the page like what you see here. So we've got one of those chat widgets that you can just click on and then engage with admission right away from the web page. And even cooler, admission gets analytics on what people are doing on this page and how they're engaging so they know what to say to those people. So that's very neat. So let's see how this might work. Let's, let's look at the talk to platform here in just a second. 
Um, yeah, completely free, by the way. There isn't even a paid tier of this platform. It's 100% free. The way that they make money is they sell uh, support hours, support add-ons, so you can purchase by the hour people overseas to help run your chat if you want, and they have a few plugins you can buy. None of that is necessary to purchase at all, though. So let's take a look at Talk2. Okay, so um, this is a product that is used by a lot of companies. Um, it has some overlap actually with Freshdesk. They've got live chat, ticketing, a knowledge base, um, team chat, et cetera. The live chat is really where it's at with this tool though, okay? So you can sign up for free, a lot of great features. They have a good knowledge base as well um, to help uh, you understand how to utilize the system because you can see there is so much functionality here, just a ton of functionality. And like I said, they pay for it by a few add-on services. So let me go ahead and log in here and show you what the back end of this looks like. So when you log into Talk2, you get presented with this uh, robust dashboard and you can see metrics about visitors to your chat pages and things like that. Um, and the other thing you can do, and this is really great for a university environment, is you can set up different properties is what they're called. So here we have a property for each area that uses the chat. So admission, cashiers, guerrilla geeks, international office, et cetera. These are segmented buckets of the system where these individual um, areas can function. You can look at the monitoring page and see who all is looking at what pages of the site if you're interested in that. And then there's, once again, there's a knowledge base in here, there's reporting in here, on chat volume and things like that. So admission has had 42 chats this week. Um, you know, Gorilla Geeks has had just a couple this week. You can look at things like how many chats have been missed, what's the average chat duration, user satisfaction based on words that people are saying as part of the chats. Lots and lots of metrics here, very robust. And then if you look at the settings in the administration, huge number of things you can do here as well. You can customize how your chat widget looks if you choose to use the chat widget. You can also use this direct chat link, which is how we create the embedded chat pages that I'll show you in a minute. Um, you can add or sync up users who have access to administer your chat, set up the alerts to different agents and how they work. You can have a ban list if you've got troublemakers who come to your chat that you can use. There are shortcuts that you can set up. Um, for chat. So if you type slash 365 here, that'll insert this snippet into the chat. Um, triggers you can set up for automations, set up email notifications, web hooks for APIs. I mean, it goes on and on and on. We could spend the whole time talking about this as well. But just real quick, let's, let's see how it works. Let's see if one of the Gorilla Geeks will answer my chat here on the fly. This is not rehearsed. I'm not on campus right now. So I'll just hit chat with a support representative. It'll go to that embedded chat page. It's gonna make me supply my name and my PSU IDs just for reference. I can hit start chat and you may not be able to hear this, but there is a ring that happens over here and it was already picked up by a Gorilla Geeks. So there is a Gorilla Geek chatting with me right now. And if I click on that, I can see what they see with the chat. So they can watch each other, or they can have administrators watching each other as well. I'll just say, hello, how are you? I'm doing a presentation for the check. So I sent them a message. They can see that on their end. Um, multiple people on the administrative side can jump in. Um, they can whisper to each other back and forth. That won't be seen by the powers or by the customer. So it's a good experience on both sides. You can also see where the person who you're chatting with is located. So I'm in Pittsburgh. You can see if they're on, that I'm on Windows, using Chrome, where I came from, and so on and so forth. So a lot of functionality here. If we have a knowledge base set up, I as the agent can look at that. I can look at my shortcuts, and so on and so forth. All right. So that's all I'm gonna do there. We'll just leave the chat here and that'll be done. So a great experience here across the board for both the customer and for the um, administrator. And the other thing that's nice about this is there is a mobile app. So if you're not an attendant sitting at a computer, if you're on the go and you have that mobile app, you can also interact with people 
from the app as well. So Talk2 is a fantastic platform for chat, which once again is a critical function that we need to support um, you know, across a university these days. All right, so let me get back to the slides. All right, let's talk about FreshPing. So FreshPing is a little bit smaller in scope, but still serves a very important purpose. Oh, yes, Tracy, um, you guys do it well, thank you. Um, but anyway, uh, so the same people who made Fresh Desk also make Fresh Ping. They have a whole line of great products. And Fresh Ping, um, the purpose of it is downtime status alerts. And for up to 50 sites, which is pretty generous. I mean, you can, you know, you can monitor a lot of your organization's infrastructure with this tool. Okay. And you can pay for more if you want, but we found that 50 is usually enough. Um, the other thing that you can do with Fresh Ping that is nice is you can create these downtime status pages for websites. So if you have a tool that sometimes has to go down for maintenance or it goes down because maybe it's flaky, you can create a status page for it that you can link to from somewhere else so people can go see what's going on on that status page. Um, it also has multi-channel alerting, so you can get alerted um, in whatever channel you prefer. So let's go take a look at, at FreshPeng and see how that works. Make sure I got the right browser tab here. Okay, so FreshPeng. Um, just taking a look at some of the features you get for the price. So a whole host of different features here. So. Uh, 50 checks max. You can check from 10 different global locations. You can have public status pages, up to 10 users, six months of data retention, five integrations, and some of these advanced features as well. That's all free. You can, you know, upgrade for a very reasonable fee um, to Blossom or Garden levels, but we've always used free and it's got plenty of functionality. So if I go over to the Fresh Ping dashboard, this is what you're going to see. So this is a list of all of the websites that my company, Limelight Marketing, is responsible for keeping up. These run on a very, uh, you know, a variable set of servers and platforms and things like that. And right now they're all up, so yay, right? Um, if anything was down, we would see it listed here in the down column. You can search for sites if you'd like to, uh, page through them. If you click on a given site, um, you can see information and metrics about it. So if we just click on this one here, you can see it's going to show us just some metrics about the average response time for the site, availability, downtime, things like that. We can look over a, you know, a longer range if we want, maybe the last three months. And we can see, you know, overall everything looks good, a little bit of slowdown lately, but not bad. You've got this calendar down here that shows you um, downtime. Um, and uh, there hasn't been any here, so that's good. And I guess if there is an incident, which it looks like January 11th, there was a little bit of downtime, you can add and keep notes here about that downtime so people know what it was, just in case it happens again. Now, if you wanna add a check, very easy to do. Um, you can check in a variety of ways. You can do a DNS check, a UDP check, TCP, a ping check, web sockets, or HTTP. We usually use HTTP. You just fill in the name of the site you want to check, give it a name, a check interval, one minute or five minutes, um, how long you want the request timeout to be, where you want alerts to go through. You can add a troubleshooting note to the alert. Um, and a couple of other things as well. You can check from certain locations. So if you say any location, FreshPing will just pick a random location and check from there. If you wanna check from a specific place, you can do that, that's very nice. Um, and you know, most of these other settings are locked out um, for the higher plans. But for free, you get a lot of functionality with checking. If you wanna pay as well, you can also get SSL monitoring, which I've been toying around with. Um, to get SSL expiration alerts, because man, when that happens with a cert you don't know about, it is the worst. So anyway, though, this is about free stuff and this is what we get for free here. Now, another thing you can do is set up these status pages. So um, you can create a status page and you can customize it um, however you want. So you can choose what site that I do downtime checks on do I want to create the status page for? Um, and then it will create you something automatically. 
it's going to be very basic. You can do some advanced settings here. You can do a, a custom domain and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just going to be a page that shows the status of your site, which can be very handy. You can also get these badges. So if you want to have a badge that displays the uptime of your site, you can get a certain number of free badges and you can embed those as well. And then in terms of general settings, um, there's not a ton here, but you can set up integrations. You can set up ticketing system integrations with like Freshdesk to get tickets when there's downtime or Slack if you want a notification or Twilio if you want texts. You can get five free integrations and you really kind of tune this in a way that gets you the alerts as quickly as you need. So that's Freshping, a little bit smaller in scope than, um, than some of the other products, but in terms of easy to get set up, easy to use, good bang for the buck, free, really, really awesome tool. And it has saved our bacon multiple times. We've gotten downtime alerts, realized we did something wrong or something's gone down, fixed it long before a customer or client ever knew there was an issue. So fresh ping is great. All right, last thing I wanna talk about is HubSpot. So this is really in a different vein than the other products. And this part of this comes from me working at a marketing company, but um, I wanna talk about this a little bit. So I'm gonna start off with the point that I believe that student recruiting is not the same as it used to be, but we still try to treat it that way. So I think a lot of universities think that we can go to you know, just keep going to career fairs or keep going to college fairs rather at high schools, keep sending out recruiters, keep mailing flyers, and we're going to get students. And I think the pandemic and just the student awareness um, of all the options out there and the current job market has shown us we really have to compete to get students to come to our universities and we have to market to them. So thinking about that and thinking about how important actively marketing to students and their parents is, um, we have to be sold. They have to be sold, right, on the experience. And we have to nurture leads, potentially, just like we would trying to sell any other large product, right? You do not have to go to college anymore. You can choose to do a variety of things and make a fantastic living. So we have to sell students on the idea that this is worth it. And part of that is just doing typical marketing activities like fostering a lead, um, sending out an email campaign, um, different things like that. So every other organization outside of higher ed does this or, or any other industry outside of higher ed does this with a CRM. And there are some specific higher ed CRMs that are out there. Um, but as I talk to universities over the years, it seems like this isn't a huge focus. And I think it really should be. So we have, since we have to sell students on the experience of coming here, we need to use customer relationship management tools and treat them more like customers and their parents as well. So the other thing that's tricky with this is a lot of enterprise grade CRMs are in incredibly expensive. So um, a good example is Salesforce. Salesforce um, is a very expensive CRM product if you purchase all the different pieces of it, even at the entry tiers, it's expensive. Um, there are other CRMs by other companies as well. Usually it's the big ERP companies that make a CRM and they get pricey. HubSpot though is free. So HubSpot offers an incredible suite of free tools. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable and it's easier to use than most CRMs, which is nice. Um, Salesforce and some of the other CRMs out there are kind of clunky and kind of difficult for people to use, but HubSpot is built in a way that it's, it, they really pride themselves on being easy to use. And we use HubSpot here at Limelight, and I can tell you firsthand that's the case. The other thing is HubSpot does cater to an education vertical. So they're not just for you know, regular uh, or, or other industries, they're for education as well. Target students throughout the admission process. So they have case studies, they have education specialists, and they have this whole methodology of inbound marketing for schools. And once again, I just think this is a critical thing that we need to be thinking about if we in higher ed want to be able to have a strong and successful future. So all these different things you can do with HubSpot, lots of universities using it, lots of good things that it can do. So let's take a look at, at HubSpot. So first of all, the pricing, let's just jump into that for a second. So 
HubSpot has a variety of very expensive pricing tiers that you can choose to opt into. And these offer a lot of great features. However, for free, you can get a whole bunch of marketing tools, forms, email marketing, ads, landing pages and conversion tools, sales tools, service tools like Freshdesk even, and operation tools. Um, you also get a bunch of free CRM capabilities like content management and things like that. So a lot of free stuff. There are limits to it, but you get access to almost the whole HubSpot platform for free if you sign up, no commitment or anything like that. So if I jump over to my HubSpot instance here that I just set up for this demo, here are some of the things we can do. So HubSpot is broken up into what they call hubs. And you've got a marketing hub and a sales hub and a service hub and an operations hub. Just real quick, I don't have much time to go over these, but you know, in your marketing hub, you can look at contacts. These are people who have you've corresponded with via email, who've signed up for a newsletter on your site, different things like that. Maybe it's a student that we talked to at, a, um, at an event, right? It's somebody we are aware of that we want to try and sell to. So you can have thousands and thousands of contacts in here. You can group them up. You can click into these contacts and you can see all of this rich information about when was the last time this person was talked to or emailed? Um, when should we follow up with them? What is their current status in the sales process? And so on and so forth. So tons in there. Um, you've also got a whole marketing suite. So you can use HubSpot to connect to Facebook and LinkedIn and do social media ads and see analytics on those. You can use HubSpot to set up marketing email campaigns that are tied to your contacts and their uh, status in the sales process. Um, you can create landing pages. So if your university is gonna have an event or something like that, you can create 20 free landing pages where you can try and use them as a sales funnel to collect those leads. Um, you can see what deals you almost have on the horizon, which uh, would be what students we've converted to come to our university. And then there's a couple of other things as well, including a lot of really rich um, analytics. Now, some of this we're not gonna get access to with the free plan, but you can see there is quite a bit that we do get to see under the free plan. I think the biggest things that we get here is this rich contacts experience where we can really thoroughly track our interaction with someone who's maybe a prospective student and use this information to sell them, to get them to come here and the marketing, the targeted ads, the email, the landing pages, and so on and so forth. So that's HubSpot. And once again, you know, just in terms of the number of capabilities you get for free, it's really quite outstanding. And they continue to add to it too. That's the case with all these products. I see new features come across all the time because going back to the beginning of my presentation, you've got to compete if you're in the SaaS space and this freemium model is one of the best ways to do that. Okay, well, I got through everything there. So first of all, thank you for um, coming to my presentation virtually. And um, if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to answer these now. If you have questions, feel free to put those in the, in the Q&A and we'll read them off. And if no one has any questions, I won't make you all sit here in silence for the next five minutes. If, uh, unless, I mean, the, the session will be open for the, at least another five minutes. So if you'd like to do that, you're welcome to. But uh, <laughs> looks like we just have some comments in the chat. Um, yeah, I agree. This was great. There's a lot of great tools in there. And I wasn't yeah, aware that HubSpot had so many free tools. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, they, they have a lot of free capabilities in there and a lot of the smaller companies we work with, um, small to mid-sized companies will use HubSpot's free tools. Um, so it's pretty, pretty neat. And we didn't even touch on, like there's all these tangential free tools we didn't even touch on from uh, the people who make Freshdesk and some of these other things too. So if you look into these tools, you're probably gonna find more free ones. Looks like we have a question in the Q and A. Um, are you able to export your data from HubSpot? Um, yes. So HubSpot, there's a couple of ways that can happen. They have a very robust 
excellent set of APIs that I've personally worked with. So you can use those APIs to get data out. Um, there are also just reports and exports that you can do. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, HubSpot also is really good about compliance, various types of compliance. And usually when you're dealing with potential customers, you know, there you'll have to be able to potentially delete data, export data and send it to them, things like that. So all that is available. So uh, we also had another question. It says, we've tried to implement HubSpot, but have not gotten much traction. What's a good way to get started with that and get my admissions team excited about using it? You really have to sell them on the benefits of the platform. Um, and, and just we're going to get more students this way. I, I think it comes down to that. That's one thing. Another thing is, um, not to be do a shameless plug, I was going to do this, but Limelight is a HubSpot partner. So if you ever want to want to talk to us about how HubSpot can be used, uh, definitely feel free. Let me put my contact info back up just in case anybody needs that. Um, but really, I think it's about showing the outcomes and even talking, going and talking to HubSpot about this, talking to their higher ed specialists is a good idea because um, people use CRMs like this because they can measure outcomes, right? And so that's one of the most critical things with sales and seeing if our marketing efforts are working is, are the outcomes positive? And the CRM makes that a lot easier. Yes, they're positive. We convert 10% of our leads, right? Versus what do we actually know if we don't have this data? Hopefully that helps. Great questions. Anybody else? This is the last session of the day, so uh, once we're done with this, then you're free to do what you want with the rest of your afternoon. Um, I will say we can. You also have the option of creating your own session if you'd just like to meet with anybody else on your own or just hang out and chat. Um, I believe you do that under the sessions tab. I'd have to. I'm not 100% sure how to tell you to do that right off the top of my head here, but um, that's something that we've been kind of telling everybody if you want to do that to hang out. Or you can try the networking feature, which is kind of a, uh, it's kind of like we, we compared it to speed dating. Like it just kind of matches you up with somebody else at the conference to talk and meet somebody, uh, to meet somebody new. That sounds so, like fun. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, and I believe the boot, the Sponsors Expo will also still be available. They may not be doing live demos right now, but they're, they're, they should at least have some kind of presentation running. So you have some options if you want to, if you want to still stick around and do some things with the conference. Otherwise, we will see you back in the morning, and I believe we start up with our first session again in the morning at 9 a.m. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks everybody for for attending my session, and thanks Chris for your help today. I hope everybody has Thank a good you, rest of the day. And time tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see, Ali. I I'm not sure. I know that you can schedule meetings with people um, if you're still here.